Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Neo 2. We're picking up where we left off in the second mission, the Beast Born of Smoke and Flame. Uh, and we're gonna find some arable land, plant our sharp things in. And then we can enjoy the rest of this pretty cool level. One in which the game starts getting more vertical. And that will continue to be a running theme in the level design, uh, is verticality. Oh, I love this little touch of entering the yokai realm where your horns show constantly, like it's pulling the yokai out of you. Uh, and so one facet of the hatchets that is unique to them is this heavy charge-up, which is slightly different in each stance, and it just turns the hatchets into a projectile with multiple levels of the charge. Uh, I believe these dudes... Oh, they're, they're like the most common form of yokai. I think they're yoki? And I know I got that wrong constantly throughout the first Neo. Uh, so welcome back to what is going to be a running theme throughout two different games. <laughs> is me mistaking the name of this particular enemy. Uh, as I beat his ass into the dirt. So in the yokai realm in the second half of this stage... Uh, we have a bunch of different routes that we can go down. Inside one of these houses, there's a trap door leading down to a big cavernous cellar. Uh, you can take the more direct route through the village. Uh, there's even a way to get up on the rooftops and start sniping down on enemies or doing uh, plunging attacks. I think we're going to probably opt for something pretty close to the ladder. First, we are going to take out the, I believe they're Gaki, G-A-K-I, of which there are a lot gathering around the fires. Uh, so we're going to do a little bit of crowd control with the heavy, or the high stance version of the Switchblade. And then clean up. That guy has just wonderfully helped me out by jumping into the fire and staying there until he got the burning debuff on him. How cool. Something that a lot of enemies, uh, like the Gaki, for instance, will do, unique to the Yokai Realm, is they will get some kind of extra buff or attribute or attack. In the case of the Gaki, when you run them out of stamina, they'll automatically spit out that purple oozing zone. And what that does is when you stand in it for a few seconds, it, uh, it inflicts a status ailment on you called Paralysis, which is just a stun. Again, we're going to go crowd control on these two. And hopefully not get grabbed. We will trade, though. Do a little trade in low stance and aggro a third one who is waiting just around. Oh, the Anki Yokai ability is super, super good. One of its strongest attributes is that it targets weak points. Uh, and it does so from a high angle, so a lot of uh, yokai, for instance, have their weak points on their heads. It's usually their horns that if you break, you stagger them. So being able to just drone strike it <laughs> from the air uh, is pretty valuable. If you note the red text at the bottom... That is something that we've seen a few times now. Uh, that is the unique yokai language, uh, which we will uncover bits and pieces of over the course of the game. Kind of get a, a codex for it. And this is why we went that rooftop route. Oh, ho, 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 he ducked around the corner to avoid that. And then completely missed his spear toss too. Something that I really love about Neo 2 that you saw in action a little bit, and, and we've probably seen it a few times here and there, um, is that enemies can't hit you from behind walls or, like, around corners. If their line of sight to you is blocked, they can't hit you. Even if the animation of their weapon swing uh, clips through the wall. And the same goes for you against them. Uh, it's just a... a Kind of a quality of life hit detection update. So it's really hard to get clipped while taking cover. Uh, we're going to deal with these two who are lying in wait in the low grass. 
on either side. And we're going to try to not round that corner because there is a, I think, a Gaki up there who's going to lob bombs down. Now, in the second half of the Burning Village, uh, across the bridge, yeah, there's the Gaki up there. We could shoot him in the head. He's patrolling away, so I have to lead him. We're going to get up on the rooftops anyway, so, yeah, save the arrow. That's such a cute little ambush. It's an easy one to walk into. <laughs> uh, you also saw the defilement of the Yokai Realm. That is not a full Yokai Realm like the one we just emerged from killing the Enki. Uh, instead, it's just a spawn for a bigger Yokai. And counterintuitively, the way that we are going to get up there is by first taking this other ladder down into another sub basement level where there is one enemy clearly behind a chest, and that's meant to draw you in. It's very Tomb of Giants-esque. They give you the obvious-ish one, but it's just obscured a little bit, so you think, oh, this is just a trap. I'm, I'm so clever for figuring this out. I noticed. I used my powers of observation to ascertain that there's a trap if I try to open that chest, and then you run towards the enemy to kill it, and you spring a different trap. That rules. <laughs> and who is this little cute purple guy? Seems as though it wants something. Uh, these little purple dudes are Sudama, as opposed to the green Kodama we collect. Uh, we can't see what it wants because of the yokai language thing. But a good rule of thumb is that they usually want a lantern fruit. Uh, they will take other things, but you have to know specifically what they want. Whereas lantern fruits usually get you something from them. So they'll take it and drop a bunch of stuff for you, including a bunch of small spirit stones, so extra XP for us. We got the lantern fruit we dropped back. Uh, we got a Hiotoka mask, which is an item that spits gouts of flames in front of you. Oh, they're just really cute and a really cool addition to all of your collectible pet friends <laughs> in Neo 2. So we have the Kodama, we have the Tsudama, uh, we have the cute little kitties, which we'll come up to another one pretty soon, actually. And now we are just above that yokai spawn. So we have made it to the top of the village again. That takes care of that, so we're not going to have to deal with anyone sniping at us when we fight uh, the yokai that spawns down below. Actually, if you go this route, you don't even have to fight that one. You can just drop off the roof here and continue on the critical path through the rest of the level. But there's still a few things that we want to see around the village. <laughs> like the kitty! Like the kitty. Oh, I love that kitty. And the kitties can't help us out because there are a bunch of Gaki around here chewing on a corpse. Oh, which reminds me. Uh, something else that's cool about the Gaki. Even the small enemies have all of these little flourishes, these little details and things about them that make them more complex than they need to be. More interesting than they really have to be. Uh, they can eat each other when they're low on health and they turn into the bigger version of the Gaki. Now let's spawn this. It's another Ipondatara. Arth was asking me what this Ipondatara's OnlyFans page was. I felt you all should know that because he a nasty. <laughs> Ooh, that swing though. The range on that's so good. As expected because it's Mizuki's ability. Let's see, are you going to start pogoing again? Because that always ends in a really easily uh, burstable uh, burst attack. <laughs> and now we have cleared out the entirety of the Burning Village. If we backtrack that way, that would take us back to the bridge. Uh, I think we dropped the shortcut ladder in the first half too, right? Not sure, actually. Uh, know that there is a shortcut there, but it's not the most useful one in the world. Uh, right before the bridge on one of the rooftops, there's a ladder you can kick down. Oh, the awning! 
Okay. We're gonna have to work for this kill. I'm about to have to go turn my air on. Because I am sweating already. But not because this dude with the flaming hatchets has me under pressure. I'm just really hyped up for today's episode that I am re-recording after Adobe Premiere deleted my source files mysteriously. Uh, and also on the topic of shortcut ladders, this is a way more useful one. It's a really cool one too. That leads us back to the shrine that we started with today. Uh, real quick, before we pass under the arch, I'm gonna snipe this dude who is going to cause problems uh, if I run into the courtyard to try to fight the big armored Odachi guy. Oh good, that did reach. Didn't do much, but... Eh. Let's just break his guard. Good. Grapple. Good animation. Just barely not in the fire. Cool. Uh, and then we'll get back to the courtyard in a second, but first... Damn. I got smacked. And this is the reason why we came back here. Oh, I forgot to keep pulse. <laughs> Lost all that stamina. Okay, friend. Cool. We will go ahead and guide the Kodama back to the shrine. I love this one's hat. They're all adorable. And back to the courtyard we go. Where we have just the one unarmored dude with the spear who is not going to get a lot accomplished. He is going to evade a little bit, though. I'm giving him way too much respect. Come on. <laughs> this might be the first time we're seeing the grapple animation for the hatchets, which is pretty cool. And then before we go on towards the forge, which is kind of like the centerpiece of the level, uh, we're going to not ignore the archer who's camouflaged in the background uh, who will just take pot shots at you while you try to fight this dude then I think this should be good charge up it's like he hears your grunting when you're winding that up and reacts to it there are certain attributes you can get on your gear uh, which will make you a little bit more capable of stealthily approaching enemies and then, we also have to invest in uh, our backstab skill. Now if we look back here, see there's a hot spring that seemingly is cut off from everything else. We'll get back to that. And now, uh, again, the centerpiece of the level, the forge. And this is part is where a lot of the verticality of the level comes into play. Even more so than all of the rooftop bits that we were doing in the village just now. The sub-basements and the rooftops. And another kitty! Ah, oh, it's the best. <laughs> it's my favorite animation. Like, you fuss the little kitty so vigorously. And then kitty helps you out. <laughs> Kitty's got your back. So while we still have it active, uh, we're going to climb up to the mid-level, deal with this problem really quick. He's probably going in the fire. Cat will finish him off, giving us time to uh, kick down a barrel of water, which opens up a new route through the first floor. Uh, and then the ladder over here leads us back up to a different part and a different bucket of water, which... Uh, hold on. There it is. I headshot that guy. Oh, it missed his horn. Oh, that's a problem. Not a big one, but... Now he'll try on me. Whenever you see him up in the air, it's the longest telegraph. Just roll straight under him. He lands and rolls forward and gives you plenty of time to hit him in the back for extra damage. I gotta say, I'm kinda happy that uh, premiere ate my footage because this episode's going better than the first time I recorded it. The miracle of practice. <laughs> of extra practice. This now being my... Let's see. There was... 
my main playthrough, my first playthrough. There was my dry run, there was the run I recorded, and there's this run that I'm re-recording, so this is my fourth time going through this goddamn level. It's okay, though. I like it well enough. And besides, the levels that we have to look forward to throughout the rest of Neo 2, exquisite stuff coming up. Oh my god, I think the next level is really pretty, if it's the one I'm thinking of. Uh, as are a lot of them, but... I think it's the first one that made me really take notice. Neo 2 up to this point and up to the end of this level is good. It gets great though. It gets so much better still. I really love that the first hit on the Switch Glaive is that wide sweep. Gives you some, some decent crowd control options, even when you're in a medium stance. As you can just not complete the combo and spam that. Boom. Not having much of the uh, the heavy attack broke the horn, though. I was saying, I'm not having much luck with the horns and that Anki yokai ability. But somehow he survived. For a second, I thought that axe was called Paradise Breaker. <laughs> Palisade Breaker is pretty cool, too. It's kind of got a, a bunker buster ring to it. So there is a ladder leaning down here. Uh, back down to kind of just above the medium floor, or the middle floor. Why would I call it the medium floor? And this one is no big deal, but he does block a pretty important barrel of water, uh, which will extinguish that central forge uh, and expose a whole sub-basement level that we can we can go down. It was way too early. Just want to get rid of that pool. Hmm. Let's play this a little safer. It would be super embarrassing to get got by this enemy. And now, I think that's every fire we can extinguish. There was still one burning uh, in a room on the opposite side uh, of, this, of this area. where we could have dropped down uh, through the ceiling. We can't extinguish that, but that does lead somewhere useful. This hole in the floor just leads down to where those uh, two or three Gaki were gathered around earlier that we dispatched with the cat. We'll roll to put the fire out more quickly. I love that there's a stop, drop, and roll mechanic in Neo. <laughs> that was there in the first game, too. Actually took more damage there than I needed to, and got uh, set on fire once more than I needed to. That's okay, though. Uh, so now that we've opened this back up, there are a lot of options. But first, let's come over here and meet our returning friend, the Nurikabe. These wall yokai. Uh, he was killed by the Nurikabe for hostile behavior, and this one for neutral. Which means we have to greet him with something positive. And he'll politely bow to you and get out of the way so we can access the hot spring. Hot springs heal you all the way up. Uh, they reveal your decadence and your your very tidy thong and six pack. <laughs> Let's you bathe with the yokai and you get a buff that uh, gives you a little bit of minor health regeneration that lasts quite a bit. Now, what else is there around here? There's quite a bit going on. I think next we should open up the way to the shrine that's locked from this side, but through the ladder over here, we can get into it. Uh, and this is also where we're going to get the key to the boss room uh, that we passed by multiple times now. Archer is a pain in the ass here, so I'm just going to have to keep dodging around him. 
Or I could have just dealt with the archer. That would have been good too. This isn't bad for being entirely <laughs> blind and not locked on. That was pretty cool. That was a pretty good fight. Let's grab the key here. And then down here uh, is the shrine. The shrine room. Which also lets us open it up. So we have the entire level open to us now. And one more major thing left to do. Let's just put one and one, and then two more points in magic. Uh, there's also going to be cause to put a few points in strength and dexterity here and there, uh, because your guardian spirits, along with some of your equipment, have uh, combined strength and dexterity requirements to activate some of their perks. So once again, we have an Ipon Dadara patrolling around trying to figure out how to activate his OnlyFans account. And a little duder. <laughs> this episode is going so well, and I'm terrified that I just forgot to hit record on either Audacity or my Elgato, which I haven't done in forever. But now that I've raised that specter, it's gonna happen. I've been set a little bit on fire. Oh, that's so cool! Good, 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 good. So that's the final Yokai Realm purified. And now we are all good to go. We got our chest. There are fireworks of different item drop rarities. And at long last, uh, we're going to take a dip in the hot spring again, just to get back to full health without using an elixir. And to get our buff, because you never know. 27 HP, a tick, 26. Eh, it could come in handy, but you'd save us an elixir or two over time. But now, with all that out of the way, we're going to climb back up to this floor once again, drop down, and it's on to the boss. And Nenraz are uh, fittingly smoked yokai who live inside of fires. So we get this cool, like, combination of, of air elemental or vapor and smoke with the fire. So in an ideal world, I would like to fight him closer to the center of the room because those columns in the corner can be destroyed when he attacks uh, and they'll drop some water that douses him does damage, does a big stamina damage, and the elemental source is water, which debuffs him and slows him down a lot. Generally, you want to save resources to get through the hard bits, so you have, like, your yokai shift, your meter, environmental things like that if you can. And holy shit, that just popped him right out of the yokai phase! <laughs> so powerful. My yokai ability reaches all the way across the room, and I start to drink his milkshake. I drink it up! <laughs> so his little explosion attack gets more range, he starts using his burst ability, that tornado form, more frequently, which is what you get uh, when you uh, beat him from his soul core. That's your yokai ability from his soul core, is that flame tornado. 
and it's incredibly powerful. I think you are intangible during it, which means you can't be hit. And it's a great crowd control tool, and it does really good damage, and you can maintain it for a second. And this is really all he does. You can uh, dodge through and to the side of his attacks pretty easily. Uh, his flying kick thing doesn't track you very well. He's a pretty straightforward boss. Plus, you have plenty of things in the environment to help you out. ここ離れてからだ。おっと。腹越し合いでもしながらでどうだ。うん。<笑> で、綾鹿島で引き連れて何がしたいの俺が俺はな、大空に輝くでっかいお天道様になるんだ。とんだやましね。要は誰にも負けんほど偉くなってやるってことだ。私は一匹でも多く綾鹿を借りたい。それだ